Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the ranch. More appropriately, I guess I should be saying, Merry Christmas Eve, everyone, and welcome back to the ranch. Good to have you here today. Today is our little Christmas video, and just like the three wise men brought baby Jesus three gifts, today I come bearing three gifts for you. The first two gifts are two of my very favorite Christmas stories, and the third gift is a Christmas visit from my band. All of these videos from the past, so I hope you enjoy them today. Once again, folks, I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas, one that's filled not only with my three little gifts, but also the three Fs, food, family, and friends. I hope you have a copious amount of food and a manageable amount of family and friends, if you know what I mean. Anyway, Merry Christmas to you all. At this time in the video, I'll turn the video over to me. Merry Christmas. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Out on the Ranch with Dr. Lee. It is a chilly, chilly Christmas Eve morning, about 38 degrees. Got a nice little breeze blowing on us, too, just to keep you from getting warm. And for a flatland Texas boy like me, this is brutal. So I hope you appreciate me being out here making this video for you. Anyway, this is a three-part video today. I have three gifts for you today. The first one I'm going to do myself. The second one will be presented by a regular contributor on this channel and the third one from a group of people who also contribute on this channel and I hope you like your little Christmas presents from me and others as well today so thanks again for tuning in today it's going to be a little bit of a lengthy video so I'm going to go ahead and get into my present to you my present to you is a story and I know a lot of you have commented that you always enjoy story time with Dr. Lee for those of you who who do um, well, welcome aboard. We're going to get into it here. For the others of you, you might just want to go ahead and fast forward to gift number two. But nevertheless, my story is a true story. It is a Christmas story. It happened 150 years ago, and I would like to say it's a bouncy little happy Christmas story, but it's not. It's a tragic, terrible, dark story. The ending of it is is just a little bit of a sunrise. The, the whole thing's a mess, but it's a true story. It's a Christmas story, and I thought you might enjoy it. Back in 1861, the year that the Civil War started, there was a young lady named Frances. All of her friends called her Fanny. And Fanny was a sweet family woman. She was in her early 40s. She was married to a fellow named Henry. They had a wonderful family. They had six children. The oldest one at that time was 16 years old. And they were just your basic everyday family. They were just trying to do the best to get by and raise their family. And they were a very loving family. And Henry and, and Fanny were very deeply in love. And late one night, Fanny was writing letters and she was sealing the letters as they all did back in the 1800s with sealing wax, which you heated up with a candle. And then you put your stamp, you folded it, put your stamp on that wax. And that's the way they sealed their letters back then. Fanny had set the candle down beside her and within a short amount of time, her dress caught a fire. And, and before she knew it, her whole entire body was ablaze. She screamed and awakened Henry, who was asleep in the next room. He came running in there, wrapped Fanny in a rug, trying to extinguish the blaze, but was unsuccessful. So then he lay his body completely on top of Fanny's and finally got the fire out only after setting himself on fire. And it was just a horrible, horrible scene. Fanny's wounds were so terrible, she passed away the next day. Henry's wounds were so terrible that he was scarred for life. He was, he was in such bad shape, he could not even attend Fanny's funeral. His face took the worst part of it, and it was very scarred, and he grew a long white beard just to cover up all the wounds on his face. So things were just terribly rough. Henry had lost the love of his life. She had basically burned to death in his arms. And then he had to recuperate from his own wounds as well. As, as time passed, the war got worse. This country was tearing itself apart. 
everyone's friends and family were involved in this war and they were out there slaughtering each other. It was the darkest moment in the United States history and Henry and all the citizens of the United States bore that pain as well. And to make matters worse, Henry was psychologically, emotionally disturbed from the death of his wife. He told a lot of his friends that he feared he would have to be institutionalized the rest of his life because the grief he bore for Fanny's death was almost incapacitating. So poor Henry was struggling on those two fronts and at the same time, his oldest son, Charlie, decided he wanted to go fight in the war. And Charlie felt it was his need as a citizen of the United States to go stand up for his rights and do what he felt was right. But Henry told Charlie that he was so, that Henry was so emotionally unstable that he feared that he could not withstand another death in the family. So they argued back and forth and back and forth. And finally, in the spring of 1863, Charlie snuck out in the middle of the night, hopped a train, went to Washington, D.C., and signed up with the Army. Totally against Henry's wishes. But you know how kids are. So Henry, so, so as this plays out, Charlie is in the Army. He's doing very well, but he gets typhoid fever has to come home. Henry gets him back healthy again, and as soon as he's healthy, he leaves and goes back to war again. He missed the Battle of Gettysburg, but he did get involved in the Battle of Mill Run. And in that battle, Charlie got shot through the back. The bullet went in one side, went very, very close to his spinal cord, and then blew out the shoulder on the other side. So Charlie was terribly wounded. This happened on the day before Thanksgiving, 1863, and um, interestingly enough, Henry found out about it on December 1st, 1863, and by December 8th, they had Charlie back home. Uh, Henry and his oldest, his next oldest son went and picked up Charlie on the battlefield and brought him back home. His days as a soldier were over, and they were unsure if he was going to live, and if he did live, was he going to be paralyzed? It was just a mess. So here you've got Henry still the the wounds in his mind from his sweet bride being burned to death in his arms were still there the war was tearing his country apart now his beloved son was laying in his bed fighting for his life and henry still had all these kids to raise and with all this bleakness and with all this these terrible things going on henry was just beside himself he did not know what to do so a, a few weeks into this, and it was Christmas morning, and Henry woke up and he could hear the church bells ringing down the street. And he went over to his desk by the fireplace and he sat down, took out a pen and a piece of paper, and he wrote down these words. I heard the bells on Christmas day, the old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet, the words repeat, of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then from each black, accursed mouth, the cannons thundered from the south, and with the sound, the carols drowned of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then peal the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. Wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. Henry's full name was Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Despite all that tragedy in his life, he wound up becoming one of the greatest writers of all time. That is an abbreviated version of that poem. It's called Christmas Bells. Again, it was written on Christmas Day, 1863. If you want to read the whole thing, just Google it. It is an awesome poem. I think you'd like it. You do not have to be an English professor to enjoy that poem. It is an awesome work. Anyway, guys, that is my number one gift to you today. And I know there's a lot of you that have a lot of dark things going on in your life. And I want you to always think of Henry. Despite all of that, he found a way to drag himself out of that hole and start a whole new life pretty impressive man. That's gift number one. Here comes gift number two. 
Well, Merry Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas to you, Lee. It's so good to have you here with me. Yes, yeah, good. Always good to be here. We all, we can always find some trouble to get into, right? Yes, we can. <laughs> but isn't it wonderful to be here in front of all of these wonderful people that watch us every once in a while? And <laughs> we're just glad to have them and yeah, hope they have a happy, wonderful Christmas. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we've got a we've got. We got a big family anyway. Yes, we and then do. when you add all these guys in, <laughs> there's a whole lot of people out there. Makes for fun, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It does. That's great. We got Christmas coming up uh, tomorrow. Yes. So this being Christmas Eve, and uh, I, I was just, I, I remember last year you talked about what Christmas was like when you were a kid. Yes. And uh, the, I think the, the, the most interesting thing, what everybody asked about and commented about, was all your presents fit in one sock. Right. Is that right? <laughs> that was right. Yeah. T tell me what all you usually got in that sock. Well, again. usually got uh, a few nuts and, uh, and an apple or an orange. Yep. And uh, then you would get uh, one packet of baby giant firecrackers. <laughs> and two packs of the small firecrackers yeah and uh either a pair of socks or a pair of underwear and uh then maybe a little toy of some kind maybe a uh a pistol yeah a little cap a cap, cap a little cap gun, cap gun or yeah. a little train or, or a horse or something like that and uh yeah then that's, that's, that was Christmas. <laughs> Christmas in a sock. That's exactly right. <laughs> and then we'd immediately go out and start playing with them, digging in the dirt. You bet. What else do we need to do? Yeah. But it's a lot of fun. And, and your mom, my granny, she, she probably prepared a feast. Oh yes, uh, always had good food. Yeah, good. and a lot of neighbors and friends and family coming yeah. in, right? You bet, yeah. you bet. That's good, that's, that's a good way to spend it. And kid folks. Yep. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Nothing better than kid folks. Nothing better. Yeah. yeah. It's the... So you've been doing all right. You've been feeling good. Well, uh, mostly I've been feeling good. Uh, you know, I have uh, that little bone marrow problem, but right. uh, we're working with it, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to hang around a few more years and uh, I think see you what's going on. And yeah. Maybe get to talk to these wonderful people every once in a while. Oh, I think you. I think, you, and, uh, I, I I think, think you're that'll good. be good. Yep. So you're 104. I'm 104. And he headed for 105, and my my motto for 105 is uh, strive for five. Strive for five. So that's what we're headed for now. All right. And the year after that, do you think it'll be sex for six? <laughs> Not with me. <laughs> no, no, man. That's wishing. That's wishing. No, man. No, it won't be that. But yeah. uh, like you said the other day, stand in line for nine. That's yeah. right. Stand in line for nine. That wouldn't be too bad either. You no, know? That's a, yeah. it's a good life. That's a good You'll do yeah, fine. That's right. Yeah. And it's going to be great to see all the grandkids together and everything this, this year. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow they're going to tear up our house for yes, sure yes indeed. and you'll be there with us that's right right in the thick of it well all righty floyd well um anything you want to any parting words you want to say to all of our friends out there i just want to wish each one of you a merry christmas a good healthy happy long life and may god bless each one of you all right it's good to see you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everyone. Well, thank you, Floyd. And yes, indeed, Christmas has changed. Not for the better. Hope you enjoyed that, folks. Here comes gift number three. <laughs> At the end, when we're singing. When we get through, yeah, when we get through, we'll, we'll close it once we get a version that will satisfy. Can you sing louder? Sure. <clears throat>
That's, that's all to say. Merry Christmas, everyone. Is that what you yeah. want to do? Yeah. And we'll just kind of wave the camera. We hope you liked that. Good night, everybody. And Merry Christmas. Y'all were supposed to say Merry Christmas then, too. Oh. Yeah, do it again. <laughs> all right. Do it again. <laughs> Bad <actors>. uh, <laughs> Well, good night, everybody. We hope you enjoyed that, and Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. Oh, woo. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's good enough. <laughs> that's all you get for a quarter. <laughs> Bud left. Yeah. <laughs> he came for and he's deaf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that band's kind of crazy, aren't they? Good people. We have a lot of fun, as you can tell. Well, folks, my fingers are about frozen. I'm going to head in the house, get a cup of coffee or possibly hot chocolate. Depends on what the girls have going right now. I hope you enjoy the rest of this Christmas Eve, and I hope tomorrow, Christmas Day, is a wonderful, beautiful day for you. I hope you get to spend it with a lot of family. And if you're traveling on this holiday, the average two-hour trip driven 80 miles an hour as opposed to 70 miles an hour will get you 21 extra minutes of listening to little Susie's trombone playing or the whole entire story of Aunt Bertha's gallbladder surgery. Think about that while you're driving. You may enjoy the drive more than you realize. Anyway, guys, Merry Christmas to you all. Thanks for stopping in on Out on the Ranch with Dr. Lee. Always remember I love you, and we will see you next time. Merry Christmas. I don't know. I think the red's <clears throat> kind of cool, though. Do you have it on a timer? The problem is it's going. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Practicing by the barn. Yeah. Start again. <laughs>